I've got a super important video for you guys right here. It can mean the difference between you landing or losing a hundred pound bass. Oh, well no, not a hundred, or twenty, or ten, five, four, three, two, one, any size bass. This can be the difference between you landing a fish or losing a fish. And it's how to tie a good knot, uh, particularly the knot that I use the most, a palmer knot. And I'll use this knot for 90% of my fishing. It doesn't matter whether I'm using fluorocarbon, braided, monofilament. I'll use it for all line types. And I'm gonna show you, uh, first I'm gonna show you how I tie that knot using this uh, huge oversized gear that's not, well this is actually used for fishing for Goliath grouper, but this is not used for fishing, this is yarn. I'm gonna show you how I tie that knot with this stuff. Then I'm gonna go through each line type. I'm gonna go through fluorocarbon, uh, braided line, monofilament. I'm gonna show you the tricks I use to get that knot absolutely perfect for each line type because each line type has its own characteristics. But let's go ahead and start off and with tying it just with uh, this stuff. So first off, you're gonna grab your line, you got the hook, you're gonna thread it through the hook like that, and you're gonna pull that line all the way through. You wanna give yourself a good amount of slack <clears throat> so you have something to work with because you're gonna need that in one step. Now you're gonna take that tag end right here and go back through the loop right where you initially put the line through, just coming back the other direction. And what that's gonna do, that's gonna give you a loop right here. So I got the main end, main line and tag end right here, and I have the loop, a loop, in this hand right here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this loop and I'm gonna make an overhand knot, a simple overhand knot, like so. I'm gonna grab that, so now I got a, you can see that's a, just your average overhand knot, Got a loop, the loop is now in the other hand, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that loop and I'm gonna put it underneath the hook, like so, just drop it down, and I'm, I see my um, ring finger right here, I like to keep that right in between where I'm tying the knot just so I don't cinch it down prematurely. That'll come into play for uh, other line types. But basically you got the uh, that loop right there, and all you gotta do is, is just basically cinch it down. It's easy as that, you're gonna grab the main line and tag in with two fingers and I'm just gonna gently pull and it comes together perfectly boom there you have it I mean I can tie a good palmer knot in about 10 seconds I can tie it in the dark it's one of the most versatile knots and strongest knots that you can learn if you don't know it already I highly recommend you learn it so let's go ahead and uh, show you I mean it's easy to tie with that stuff let's go ahead and go with uh, fluorocarbon next this is one of the trickier lines to tie a good knot with. Fluorocarbon is very abrasion resistant, it's invisible, but it has a lot of memory and it's very, very stiff. And because it's so stiff, it tends to have very weak knot strength. A lot of times, even if you tie a perfect knot, you'll only retain like 70% knot strength. So that means if you're using 10 pound fluorocarbon, you tie a perfect knot, your line will end up breaking at seven pounds, which, which, uh, which sucks, but that's the way it is. So you definitely want to tie the best knot you possibly can and certain fluorocarbon brands will have uh, better knot strength, especially more like ones that are tend to be more limp and less stiff. Um, you can get better knots with, but then you get less abrasion resistance. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I do to tie the best knot possible, especially when using this type of line. So same process, got your hook, got your line, go through the eye of the hook like so, and you're gonna pull out some extra line that you have to work with. I'm gonna go back through the eye of the hook like that. I'm gonna grab the main line and tag in with these two fingers that I'm holding it with. And then I have a loop in this hand right here. And now what I'm gonna do next, same thing. My line's caught. I'm gonna do a simple overhand knot. Like so. And so here's the overhand knot. And again, I have my I put my ring finger right in the middle of that loop right there just so it doesn't cinch down prematurely which can cause some issues. Got the loop, same thing, just gonna guide it underneath the hook. And now here's where things get a little bit different. So you, I have my ring finger right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just work that ring finger up because I want that loop, I want there to be plenty of space. And now what I'm gonna do, for fluorocarbon particularly, is I'm gonna make sure that loop that I made I'm gonna bring it all the way to the top, like that. So that loops all the way to the top, and now you just got that extra space right here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet the line. You want it extra lubricated so there's no friction damaging the line. Okay, like that. And now, you're pretty much done. That's all you gotta do. The couple extra steps can mean the world of difference for tying a good knot 
with fluorocarbon line. And I'm just going to pull down nice and easy, both the main line and tag in at the same time. And there you have it. That's a perfect knot with fluorocarbon line. That'll give you the max, the max knot strength you can possibly get. Let's go ahead and go with braided line next, which is basically the opposite of fluorocarbon in terms of st stiffness. Uh, fluorocarbon is extremely stiff, braid is extremely limp, so uh, generally it has really good knot strength. The only problem is with braid, uh, you can actually have the knot slip, so the line won't break, but when you set the hook, you have your knot and it'll just pull free from the hook, you'll lose everything. And that can, uh, that's a problem that some anglers have, especially if you're using like a clinch knot. Not the imp improved clinch knot is okay, a regular clinch knot is really bad with braid. But I'm going to show you what I can do with the Palomar knot to give you the best knot possible when using braid. And uh, getting the uh, max line strength out of your 20, 30, 50 pound braid and pulling the logs or something if you get snagged. So I'm going to start off the same way, actually I'm going to start off, I'm going to restart because I'm more comfortable when I tie the knot from this end. I'm going to put the line through the eye of the hook just like before, I'm going to pull it through like that, and then I'm going to go back through the eye like so, and you got your line right here, and one thing I want to show you, sometimes when you guys are new, if you're new at tying this knot, sometimes your line can get twisted like that, I don't, I don't know if you can tell that it's twisted, you don't want that to happen, that's going to weaken your knot strength, especially if you're using uh, fluorocarbon or monofilament. Always make sure your lines are parallel like that, and uh, let's go ahead, next step as usual, Gonna grab your loop and make a simple overhand knot like that. And then take that loop, go underneath the hook like so. And basically, you just start pulling the line from there from the uh, from the tag end and main end at the same time. And eventually, that loop down there will work its way up. Let's see if it wants to cooperate. There it goes. And at this point, that loop is not really where it wants to be. It's gonna get stuck right down there. You probably can't see it. So I'm just gonna use my hand. And just make sure it's in position. Now I brought it to the top, and all I gotta do is pull, and boom, like that. So I'm gonna pull as hard as I can, and a lot of times braided line can be really sharp, so if you, you can't really pull that hard or you cut yourself. So unless you're a masochist, you don't wanna do that. Uh, what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna have a smooth, rounded object like this, and I'm gonna wrap the main line on the braid around it several times. And now what that's gonna let me do, that's gonna let me pull on the hook and the line as hard as I want to get that knot super freaking tight and now you don't have to worry about it slipping when you set the hook. Boom. Last up we got monofilament and monofilament is pretty easy to tie knots with. You don't really need to wet it. You don't really need to worry about it slipping. It's a pretty good line to tie knots with. It, it, it maintains uh, like 90% knot strength most of the time. So it's pretty solid but the one thing I want to show you is what if you have not a little hook but a big bait and you still want to tie the palomar knot. So there's an extra step you need to do or another extra step you need to be aware of. So I'm going to thread that line through just like before and I need to thread a lot of line through because you're going to need a lot of space to work with because you want you're going to need uh, to make sure that loop goes all the way under the bait but other than that same step same steps I mean you're going to go right back through and you're gonna have your loop in one hand and you're gonna have your main line and tag end in the other. Simple overhand knot just like before. Like that. Go underneath the bait entirely. And basically you can just let gravity do the work. This can get tricky when you're dealing with this much line but if you keep everything straight and you grab, keep always keep your main line and tag end pinched between two fingers, uh, it'll all work out in the end. That's all you gotta know. I'm going to pull it gently right here and same thing that loop is going to get a little bit caught right down here. I'm going to bring it to the top. Alright, so the video is pretty much finished. So all you got to do is cinch it down before my dogs start going crazy like that. And you got a perfect knot with monofilament or with a bigger style bait. Sometimes I'll use an improved clinch knot if I have a really big bait I don't want to waste a lot of line. But uh, when I can, I like to tie the palomar knot. Like I said, I lose the least amount of fish with the palomar knot. It almost never fails for me. Very confident in it. So if you guys don't want the heartache of losing your what's potentially your biggest fish ever, biggest bass ever, whatever, learn how to tie a good knot. 
don't use the clinch knot. The clinch knot is also known as a fisherman's knot. That's more of a basic knot. It doesn't really have the line strength that you can get from the Palomar knot. The improved clinch knot is pretty good too. That's a good knot as well. But like I said, the Palomar knot is my go-to knot. I have the most success with it. It's awesome. And I'm going to end the video before you guys get too distracted. Thanks for watching.